Welcome back to Rock Paper Shotgun, and our weekly show where one of us recommends a game they love and think you should be playing. Handily titled, You Should Be Playing. My name is Noah, and my recommendation this week is Bloober Team's cyberpunk thriller, Observer. Before we dig in, feel free to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of these recommendations going forward. Developed by the same studio who brought horror to the art world in Layers of Fear, Observer is another game tinged with horror, only this time with a heavy emphasis on science fiction, detective work, as well as traditional exploration. Set in a dystopian future, you play as Daniel Lazarski, voiced by Rutger Hauer, which gets us into that Blade Runnery mind space. Lazarski is a neural detective, a fancy term for brain-hacking detective, poised to go digging about in your mental unmentionables. And after receiving a mysterious phone call from his past, he has to figure out why all the weird goings on. So, why do I like this game so much? Well, largely because it just drops you into this cold, cruel world, both without a blanket and very little in the way of context. I mean that both in terms of story and how you actually play it. Levels are small, yet labyrinthine, as most of the spaces you occupy are grim, government-built buildings with shoddy sign work and awkward, cramped architecture. Most of the game takes place in a slum complex, and as a detective, you have to talk to the tenants. That's no small feat. There are doors everywhere, and each person is hiding a secret, or has information you could use. But with very little to distinguish one apartment from the next, it can make the simple task of tracking somebody down so much more difficult. I know I backtracked several times by accident. If only pigeons were easily distinguishable from each other, and limited to one spot in the hall where they never move. So much information about the world and central story is packed into these areas that it all feels deliberately designed to confuse. Or maybe I'm bad at reading floor plans. One thing I noticed straight away and loved was how everything about the design of these locations weighed heavily. Lights, the use of color, narrow space, posters and ads are all so oppressive on the senses. I know that if I use the word visceral, I have to put a penny in the terrible gaming cliché jar, but the world of Observer has a very tangible effect on me. The story also refuses to signpost anything. I don't want to spoil anything here, but I will say it took me a few hours or so of mental gymnastics before I realised what I was actually seeing, and it was brilliant. That said, it would appear that Bloober Team would rather leave narrative interpretation to you. And considering the story is philosophical, you'll be burning a lot of brain calories. As you explore, you're given a few prompts here and there. How to hack, inspect, monitor information with your Dream Eater, a glove that doubles up as a scanner, among other things that I'll get to shortly. But again, you're left to figure it out for yourself. Because your role as an elite neural detective involves hacking into the minds of others, you metaphorically stray from the beaten path to enter the dark woods without a compass. You do this to work out a blossoming mystery, who killed who and why, and to understand your place in it as well. But this neural trip is not so simple as reliving a straight memory. Images and sequences are jumbled, strange, and in some cases, quite scary. You interact with them insofar as you watch and keep moving forward, wherever that may be. But I know that I was shocked by some of the surprises buried within them. The game throws curveballs at you, and it absolutely works, especially in such an unfriendly fictional setting. Not a term I would normally use to describe a game location, even one in the horror genre. There's playing in an unsettling place, where traditional surface scares reside, and then there are game worlds that don't want you to settle in them. I'm talking warped, strangely drawn spaces that isolate and alienate you. Observer is very much the latter, much like Layers of Fear, you can really see the evolution between Bloober's games. Another thing I like a lot about Observer is how it freshens up the exploration genre or the walking simulator, a genre I enjoy but do sometimes get tired of if there isn't a little bit more to it. In Observer, most of your time is spent looking around and walking through scripted events. You'll still be wandering down empty corridors, even if they are in someone else's head, and ransacking apartment buildings. Unlike other exploration-heavy stories, however, there's more to see and do in these spaces. For starters, there are many people to talk to, as I previously mentioned, not always face-to-face, -face, mind you. Some are helpful, others less so, but they're always there, watching you through their peepholes regardless. You'll need to reach out to the folks inside, else trying to find your way to a certain apartment or trying to pry information about someone's whereabouts would be impossible. 
This might look an awful lot like chatting with static NPCs, and on some level I guess it is, but sense of life just out of reach, cowering behind the door, gives the building a real nervous charge, one that ties into the other defining feature. You see, hacking also changes up the routine. The Dream Eater allows you to enter people's minds, and is also a scanner. As it directly feeds into your neural network, including your cybernetic eyeballs, it can also enhance your sight through night vision mode. That said, you'll mainly be using it to solve crime scenes. It's not exactly complicated, but interacting and picking through the story, or more precisely the victims of it, opens up a whole can of worms. The Dream Eater feels to me like going through a crime scene with a fine-toothed comb. I spent so much of my time with the game unearthing pieces of the puzzle, whether it meant scanning items to determine their origin, or pinning down the time and cause of someone's death, or looking beyond the world around you, peering into the anatomy of the building itself. I guess what my love of this game boils down to are the feelings of fear, melancholy, and utter confusion it generates, not just atmospherically, but in the strange mechanics of your job all wrapped up neatly in cyberpunk horror wrapping paper. The game's bizarre atmosphere, music and storytelling are so strong, the game not only demands to be seen, but stands apart from the rest. There are moments where sequences drag on, and a few elements introduced later on that strain an otherwise smoothly executed experience, but they aren't enough to dampen what Observer gets so darn right. So, I feel it deserves a hearty recommendation to all you lovers of horror games, cyberpunk, or Rutger Hauer, and isn't that all of us? Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do consider subscribing to the channel. Being subscribed to RPS is a lot like exploring a knotty apartment building, only instead of creeps behind different doors, there are let's plays of bus simulators or lists of great games you can finish in just a few hours. That said, don't be afraid to go poking around the channel and let us know what you think in the comments. Hopefully we'll see you soon.